what is an adjoint of a linear operator on an inner product space. And then we also saw some some results related to linear functional on a on an inner product space. So let me recall what we did in the last class. So in the last lecture, we we saw that if we have a like if we have an inner product space V or some field F, and if we fix a vector in V, let's say U, then depending on this vector V, vector U, we can define a linear functional on V that we can denote by F under, under F subscript U v to f and how it is defined you take any vector in v and send it to the inner product of v with you for all v now this you can check that uh, uh, this is a linear functional on on v and this we can do for every vector in the vector in the inner product space in fact we saw that uh, then we asked this question whether this the converse is also true that means if we if we are given a linear functional f, then can we find a vector in V such that this f has this form? Now the answer of this question is 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 not true, or we cannot do it um, if V is an infinite dimensional inner product space. But if V is a finite dimension inner product space, then we can always do it. So basically, for finite dimension inner product space. We can say that if V is a network, V is a, let's say V is a finite dimension in network space, then we can say that if F is any linear functional on V, then there exists a unique, the uniqueness also we saw, there exists a unique vector, let us denote it by UF in V, such that this F has this form, F of V is equal to in network of V. With U F, this is true for all V in the, in the network space. This is true for finite dimension network space. And then we define adjoint of a linear operator. So what is an adjoint of a linear operator on an inner product space? So if we have an inner product space again V, and if T is a linear operator on V, then adjoint of a or adjoint of T is a linear operator S on V that satisfy this property that uh, says that inner product of T of U with V is equal to inner product of U with S of V. And this is true for all vectors UV in V. If this is true, then we call S as a an adjoint of T, but we saw that it, we did not talk about the existence of uh, the adjoint, uh, adjoint of uh, of a linear operator, but we saw that if adjoint exists, then it is always unique. So uniqueness is true, and therefore we can denote this uh, adjoint by by this notation T star. So the existence is not clear at this point, but if it exists, then it is always unique. This is also we saw in the in the last class. Then I mentioned that uh, the existence uh, in an in an infinite dimension inner product space is 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 not true and need not be true. So that means uh, if we have an infinite dimension inner product space and if we have a linear operator on on that inner inner product space, that in a, that uh, operator need not have a uh, need not have a, uh, an a joint on V. This is infinite dimension on infinite dimension in product space, and uh, the you can one can find an example also, and you will see that uh, the way we will prove uh, the, for the finite dimension case, uh, it it's sort of clear that uh, because of something because of this result uh, here, this is not true for infinite dimension case, and therefore uh, it's not. Possible to do it for any infinite dimension of the space. You you need some other uh, other conditions on the. Okay, so let us prove this result for finite dimension. That means uh, if we have a, if v is a 
um, finite dimension in inner product space and T is a linear operator on this, then it will always have uh, its a joint. Okay, so let us start today's lecture by proving that. All right, so let me write the result first. So let V be a finite dimension in that product space. And suppose that T is a linear operator on this V. Then, then T, or you can say, or yeah, T has an adjoint then t has an adjoint on v what does it mean that means there exist a unique operator t star on v such that this relation is true this relation is true for all vectors u and v in v Okay, so let us prove this. So, what we have to do here in the proof, we have to find a linear operator on V. It's a T star such that this relation is true. This we have to keep in mind while defining this operator T star. So, we want a linear operator on V such that this relation is true. Okay, so let what I will do here, so let us uh, uh, see this first. So if I take any vector, so we, we want to define T star, right? So if I take any vector, let's say U in V, and based on this vector U, I'll define, I'll define this functional F on V. How would I define? I will send, I'll take any vector in V and send it to T of V U for all V in V. Okay, so for any fixed vector U here, I will define this linear functional F this way. Okay, now you can verify that this is a linear functional. This is linear because uh, because of uh, the fact that t is linear so you can verify that uh, this f whatever i have defined here this is a linear functional of v so for every vector u i can define a function a functional on v this way okay now since this is a linear functional on v and we know that for since it's a linear functional from the previous ob uh, from the observation in the last lecture you know that there exist there exist a unique so this implies that there exist a unique let's say uf in v this is just a notation depending on this f there exist a unique vector let's denote it by uf such that such that f of v is equal to v inner product of V with U F, right? But then what is left hand side? So left hand side here is P of V U. Now you can see here, can you get some idea? So this is true for every vector, uh, for any vector U. So if I take, start with a vector U, I can define F in this form, in this form. But then I know that since this is a linear functional, so for this linear functional, and V is a finite dimension in a property space, there exists a unique UF, such that F can be written in this way, but F is actually defined this way. So this is, uh, so far this is what we have. And this is true, now you can see that this is true. If you do it, you can do it for every vector U. Okay, so. This is true, right? So now can you get some idea how to define the, this T star? So see here, what I want, so we want, so let us see what we want. So we want 
to define a map T star from V to V, right? So that it is linear and it satisfies it satisfies this relation. Now, can you get some idea by looking at this here? How should I define this V? So that uh, this relation is satisfied. Can you give me some idea? Is there a way to relate vector here to here from this uh, above whatever we did uh, from this? Can you give some idea how to define this? Or if I take a vector here, then where should I send it to? Or, or to which vector I, I should assign to this? So here you see, I started with any vector u, and for this vector u, I have found somehow this vector uf, and this satisfies this relation. So now if I assign, if I see here, if I assign u to uf, so that means I send u to uf, then this is a well-defined map because for every u, this is a unique uf because you can define f, but for this f, there is a unique uf, so you can assign this, send this u to uf in this way. And then if this is true, so what I'm saying is that now if you, <laughs> so if we define, so if I define now as a T star, just a notation from V to V, this way, that T star sends U to UF. Okay, you define this by this. Now, it's clearly, so we need to check that this is, if we want to say that this is an adjoint, then we need to check that this is a linear, this is a linear operator on V, and it satisfies this relation here. Now, first see that this relation is immediate because of the way we have defined this T star, because how it is true, this is very straightforward. If, you, if I call this, let's say star, this expression, then from a star, you can see that uh, clearly T of V U is equal to V U F, but U F is just T star U. And this is true now for all U and V. So this relation is satisfied. So we are done if we just show that T star is a linear operator. Right? So clearly this is true the way we have defined this. So we just need to show in order to say that this T star is an adjoint of T. We just need to check whether T star is a linear uh, is a linear operator or not. That means the linear transformation from V to V. Now to, cho to check the linearity, we just use the definition. So let us see whether this is true or not. So, so, let, so please keep yourself muted. So let alpha belongs to, alpha is any scalar, and u and v are two vectors. Please, please keep yourself muted. Please keep yourself muted if you don't have anything to ask. So I'm muting you all so that uh, there's no disturbance. Let me just check whether I can do that or not. So Nishu, can you uh, mute yourself? Yes, thank you. Okay, so we have we just need to check whether this T star, the map we have defined, it is uh, it's linear or not. So I'll just use the 
is the property that uh, this t star satisfy this thing. Okay, so let's see how to prove this. So take. So if if I take this alpha and a scalar and u and v are two vectors, then you can check that for any vector w. So for any w in v. If you look at this one. So what I'm trying to do is basically I'm trying to show that uh, this T star is linear by showing that uh, this is equal to. Uh, alpha T star U plus T star V. For all W. So this is what we are trying to show. So we will try to show this. So is, if this is true, this relation is true for all W, then in particular I can take W as this vector itself and therefore uh, we'll get an equality here. Right, so I'm trying to show that for any vector W. And if I fix this alpha and UV in V, then this is equal to this. This is what I'm trying to do here. So. Let us see why this is true. So from here. So can you tell me what should I what I can do from here? What would be the next step? T W. So you are saying that uh, use this property or what? Or, or yes, you mean this one? This one? Okay. Yeah, yes, so sir. I can write. Okay, I can write this as T W alpha U plus V. Then what? Then. Then. Uh, alpha uh, so um, so we can al alpha open this in a conjugate, conjugate, right? yeah so we can write this as tw alpha u plus tw v okay then from here i can write this as alpha bar tw because of the inner product u plus tw v but then this is equal to alpha bar. What is this equal to? This is equal to W T star U plus W T star of V. Right now from here I can again write it as W. I can take alpha inside so it would be alpha T star U plus W T star V. Right, but then again, I can write this as W alpha T star of U plus T star of T. And this is true for all W because W is any vector in V, so this is true for all vector W in V. Now, <clears throat> from here, what I can say, I can say that W T star alpha U plus V minus alpha t star u uh, minus or let's say plus t star of v is equal to zero for all w in v this is true now can i say from here that uh, this is equal to this yes yes so why this is true so we can take W equal to this second component. Yeah, this vector we can W if we take W equal to this, then this implies that this inner product is zero. Inner product of this vector with itself is zero, but because of the inner product uh, non uh, positivity property, this is true if and only this vector itself is zero. But if this is zero, then that means this quantity is equal to this one. And <clears throat> so this implies that T star alpha u, <coughs> sorry, plus v is equal to alpha t star u plus t star v, and this is true. So we started with any alpha in uh, in f and uv in v. So this is true for all all alpha in f and uv in v. So this implies that t star is a linear operator in v. And we are done. So T star is a linear operator on V. 
that satisfies this property that means t star is a is an adjoint adjoint of t okay now you can see that where did we use the fact that uh, v is finite dimensional so where did we use the fact that t that v is finite dimensional yes. yeah so in the existence of this this vector right so for any f so if v is infinite dimension in that case also we can do similarly up to this step but then we are not sure whether there exists this vector u such that we can write it in this way and therefore the same proof will not work if we replace uh, we change uh, v from finite dimension to infinite dimension in fact one can show that no the proof will work uh, or there exist linear operators on an infinite dimension network space that do not have any uh, adjoint that do not have an adjoint okay you need some extra condition for that on an infinite dimension network but for finite dimension there, there is no no issue and we have a proof here okay so now you can see that uh, you have a you have a if you have a linear operator on a finite dimension network space then you can find its adjoint that means t star and you know that if v is a finite dimension in a uh, finite dimension vector space and t is a linear operator on this then there is a matrix representation of of t so the, in the, uh, there is a one to one map or there is an isomorphism between the set of uh, linear transformation on a finite dimension network space and on the set of uh, matrices of appropriate size the size depends on the dimension of, of v. dimension of v. So, so basically we know that uh, we know adjoint for a matrix that means the complex conjugate transpose and now we also have a uh, uh, have an adjoint for uh, for linear operators so what i'm saying is that we have uh, this set set of linear transformation or linear operators and we also have if v is finite dimensional then we have set of linear operators and here we have set of matrices of of, of size uh, depending on the dimension of v so if v is of dimension n then we have this and we know that there is a there is a there is an isomorphism between these two now we have a concept of adjoint here that means if i take any matrix a then we i can write it's a star and we have a concept of adjoint here also that means if i take any linear operator t then i can write it's t star now the next question is how these two things are related and the obvious uh, answer or the obvious guess would be okay if i take a, this is my guess but i'll see whether it is this is true or not so if if i have a operator t here and if i write its matrix representation with respect to some basis then my guess is that the matrix representation of t star is just the star of this this is my guess so in fact we'll see that this is uh, true if we choose uh, not the normal basis on this. okay so this is what we are going to answer in the in the next all right so you can uh, let me write this simple observation which will be useful in proving what i just mentioned so if we have a uh, we have a finite dimension inner product space let's say v and if we have a linear operator on this so this is just an observation but i can write this uh, i'll write this as a result so if we have a finite dimension inner product space and we have a linear operator on this this vector space or uh, this uh, inner product space since it's finite dimension so we can fix a basis for this so let's say this q1 to qn this is a this is an orthonormal basis because it's a inner product space so we can talk about orthonormal basis 
So suppose that this is an orthonormal basis of V. Then if we, so we, since V is finite dimension, T is a linear operator on this. So we can find its matrix representation. So let's say this is the matrix of T with respect to this basis V is equal to this matrix A, where the entries are denoted by AIG. Okay. So let th these things are true. So, so let V be a finite dimension vector space. And suppose that we have an operator on this V. Since the finite dimension, so let us fix an orthonormal basis. Since it's a, again, it's an operator, T is an operator on finite dimension vector space, we can find its matrix representation. So let us call this A. The entries of uh, this matrix is denoted by AIG. Then, if this is the case, then you can actually write what are these entries, this AIG. These entries are explicitly, you can, in advance, you can tell what are these entries. So see, if I give you a uh, linear operator on a on a on a vector space, on a finite dimensional vector space, you know that there exists. Uh, you know what would be the if I give you a basis, then you can say okay, one can find its matrix representation. So you will do some simplification, you will do some calculation, and you will, you will find out. But in case of an inner product space, you can immediately tell what are these, what is this matrix. So you can tell that okay, the entries are this. So the uh, you can easily tell explicitly that these are the entries. So this is what this result says that in this case these entries are given by this inner product T of Q J with Q I. All right. So why this is true? This is very straightforward. Why this is true? So this is just one line proof. So you know what is this matrix? It's a it's a matter how we write matrix representation. So if I take so let's say for each j, what is T of Q J? So if you if I want to if you look at this matrix here, A, then what would be this T Q J? What it would be? So Q J, Q1 to Q N they are the basis vectors. And we have a matrix representation, so that means I can write this T of QJ in terms of these uh, matrix entries. So can you tell me what it would be? So it would be summation I equal to 1 to N AIJ QI. Right? But then T of, Q, T of QJ, this is a vector in V. V is an finite dimension inner product space. We have an orthonormal basis for this. So, and we know that, therefore, we know that this T of QJ, we can also write. You remember, if we have a vector in V and if we have an orthonormal basis, then this vector V can be written as uh, this one V of QI, QI, if you remember this. So, here I will just apply this thing for T of QJ. Because this is also a vector in V. So, what is this? This is just summation T of QJ, QI, inner product, where I is running from 1 to N. But if this is the case, then can I say that this implies that AIJ is equal to T of QJ, QI? For all ij, is it true? Yes. Why? Why this is true? From here, can how can you say this? Just give me justification that this implies this thing. Yes, so you can take uh, all everything to one side. So if I take this also to this side, then what it would be this quantity minus this one for all i equal to 1 to n for summation i equal to 1 to n. But then you know that this q1 to qn, they are they form a basis, so they are linearly independent. And therefore, uh, 
this implies that these coefficients are uh, zero that means a i j equal to this but this is true for all i and j so therefore if you have a you are in an inner quality space and you have a basis for this orthonormal basis for this then you can immediately tell what would be the matrix entries here now using this uh, result you can actually prove which i will give you as an exercise so you can work out this so the exercise is following so if we have a let's say finite dimension inner quality space and suppose that we have a linear operator on V. Suppose that we have a basis for, uh, we have an orthonormal basis, let's say Q1 to Qn. This is an orthonormal basis of V. Then you can show that the matrix of T star with respect to this basis V is the star of matrix of T. Okay, this is an exercise. So this is very easy. So let me give you uh, some hints how to do this. So let us, so what we have to show, we have to show that uh, this is true. We can find the matrix of T star because T star is a linear operator on V. T is a given operator on V. So we can find, find both these matrices. We just need to show that one matrix is the complex conjugate transpose of the other one. So if I just denote, let's say, uh, so if I say, okay, a, let's say Aij, this denotes the matrix of T with respect to the basis B. And let's say Vij, this denotes the matrix of T star. To this. So what is what should be my claim? My claim should be to show that Bij is actually a i j bar or a j i bar it's a complex conjugate transpose so it should be a j i bar right this is what what is my claim now but why this is true this is true because of the above result here this is one line proof so okay so let me Tell you why this is true. So what we can say from above that this AIJ is equal. Yes. Say yeah, I'm conjugate transpose. No, I'm not saying. I'm saying that claim. This is our claim to show. So I'm okay. saying that this is let's say AIJ denote this and BIJ denote the matrix of T star. Then our claim is to show that this is true. This is what we are trying to show. Not saying this implies, I'm showing that this is our claim. So I've written here. This we want to show. Okay. So this is uh, this follows because of this uh, this observation here. This is true for any operator T. So what would be this uh, AIJ here? Tell me what would be this AIJ because of the previous result. This it is just inner product of T of QJ with QI. But similarly, so similarly, you can write for Bij also because Bij uh, is a matrix representation of T star and T star is a linear operator. So from here, the same way we can say that uh, this Bij would be Bij would be T star Qj Qi same way, right? But then this Bij I can write as using the uh, adjoint property it would be qj of tqi right but then this is same as tqi qj bar but then if you look at here tqi qj what it is what is this one A J bar. Q, 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 Q. A, yeah, A J I bar. So from here yes. now you can see that uh, matrix of T star is actually a uh, star of matrix of T. So this is very immediate. So basically this is not an exercise. I have already proved this. So this is you can write this as a result now.
Okay. All right. So let us do one example here. Suppose that we want to find, uh, let's say, star. Star of a linear operator. It means how to find adjoint of a linear operator. We have we have shown how to uh, we have shown the existence of a finite dimension in for space. But let us see how to find it. So there are two ways. One is just use the definition, and the other one is uh, this result. So if you are given a linear operator T. On a in, in, on a finite dimension inner property space, then what you will do, you will fix a basis. You will fix a basis, any uh, basis, orthonormal basis. Once you have a basis, orthonormal basis, you will find its matrix representation. Once you know the matrix representation of T with respect to this orthonormal basis, you can immediately, uh, you will immediately know because of this result what would be the matrix representation of T star. T star you don't know in uh, explicitly, but you know its matrix representation. Once you know matrix representation of a of a linear operator, then actually you can uh, find what what is the what is the linear operator itself. So in fact, you know T star also. So because of this result, you can easily find adjoint of a linear operator. Okay. So for example, let us look at this example here. So consider this uh, this operator T from. So I have taken this simple example, but you can work out other other examples from the textbook. So what is how it is defined? It, it sends uh, a triplet um, real triplet x1, x2, x3 in R3 to this one x2 plus 3x3 2x1 0. Okay. Now the question is find T star. Okay. So we have to find T star. Now, as I mentioned, there are two ways. The first way is uh, you can use the above result. So how to do that? So let me do it in two ways. So you know both the ways. So the first method is that you just find matrix representation of T with respect to an orthonormal basis. So this is very important that whatever we are doing here, this is this result is true only when we have an orthonormal basis here, because then only you can write uh, the, the result is true, which we are using in this proof. So first you have to find an orthonormal basis for R3. So when I'm saying that uh, find T star, and I have not mentioned the inner product on R3, so you assume that it is a it is the standard inner product. So R3, I have considered here R3 as a standard inner product space. So you can say R3 with the standard inner product. So what we have to do here, we first fix a basis for R3. So tell me an orthonormal basis for R3 with respect to standard inner product. Standard basis. Yes, uh, standard basis. So you take this E1, E2, E3. So let's say this is a basis. So this is orthonormal basis of R3 with respect to the standard inner product. Then we can immediately find the matrix of T. Can you tell me what would be the matrix of T now with respect to B, this basis? Tell me matrix of T. 1, 2, 0. 1, 2, 0. But yes, uh, here, not 1, 2, 0. 0, 2, 0, sir. Yeah, it's 0, hey, 2, 0. 0, 2, 0. Then? Uh, 1, zero, 1, zero, one zero. Zero, 0, 0. And next? 3, uh, three, three zero, 0, 0. Yeah, so you now have a matrix of T with respect to this orthonormal basis. Now, immediately, once you know T matrix of T, you can uh, easily write what would be matrix of T star with respect to this basis. So you know this also because of this result. It is just star of T. 
So basically, it is just you take the complex conjugate transpose, but here it is real. So complex conjugate transpose is just the transpose of this matrix. So it is 0, 1, 3, 2, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0. All right, this is your matrix of T star. So you know matrix of T star also. So if this is true, then can you tell me what would be T star? You know the matrix of uh, T star now. So you can easily write here what is what it is. So if you take any uh, triplet here, x1, x2, x3, then you send it to this one. Um, yeah, what it is? 2x2. Yeah, 2x2. Uh, two two. Yeah, 2x2. Two then? Uh, then x1. x1, comma 3x3. 3x1. Three. 3x1. Three okay, so now you can see that it's very easy to find T star at least for such an example. The second method is that there is another way to find this. In some cases, this is also useful. The second method is just use the definition. So what we want, so we want T star, T star the linear operator, that means adjoint of T, that satisfies certain uh, expression. That means this T of X, Y is equal to X of T star Y. For all x y, this is what we want. Okay, so how to do that? So this is the way to find. Also find. Uh, this this is another way to find t star. So if I take two vectors, let's say x and y. So x would be of the form this in R three, and y would be of the form let's say y one, y two, y three in R three. So we don't know yet T star, but we know that if T star exists, then it will satisfy this thing. That, uh, X1, X2, X3, T star, Y1, Y2, Y3, this is equal to T X1, X2, X3, Y1, Y2, Y3. Right? We don't know at this point what is this T star we are trying to find. If it exists, then it will satisfy this kind of thing. But what does it mean? This implies that we know T x1, x2, x3. So it is like uh, x2 plus x2. So what is the definition of this? At T x2 plus 3 x3. Then it is uh, 2 x1, 0. This is T x1, x2, x3. And then y1, y2, y3, you can write as it is. Now you write the what is the inner product? What is the uh, inner product? It's a standard inner product. So what it would be? It would be uh, x2 y1 plus 3 x3 y1 plus 2 x1 y2. This is what it would be. But the same quantity I can write as this also, this inner product also. It's x1 x2 x3 uh, 2 y1, oh sorry, 2 y2. Uh, y1, 3y1. But then this is true. Now you can see that this, whatever I have written, this is true for all x1, x2, x3, all vectors, uh, all vectors x and y in R3. But then from here, you can immediately say, because this is true for all x, y in R3, so this implies that t star y1 y2 y3 if you define t star in this way that this is equal to 2 y2 y1 3 y1 then it is a it is actually an adjoint of t okay so you can see that it is the same thing as we have found using the matrix presentation all right so OK, so let me move further. So what we have seen here, we have seen that. Uh, so what we can observe from here, so now we we know a way to relate. Uh, uh, adjoint of a matrix to adjoint of a 
linear operator. So we know some way here because of this result that if we choose an orthonormal basis, then matrix of T, matrix of T star is just the adjoint of matrix of T. So what I want to say is that basically there are two ways. So this is like a general information that there are two ways to study linear algebra. One, by studying, so you might have observed that while teaching you uh, this course so far, I always try to relate re results in the set of matrices and the set of uh, linear transformation. Okay, wherever uh, it was possible, I tried to connect that there is a way to go from here to there and so on. So basically, there are two ways, two parallel ways you can say to study linear algebra. One by studying linear linear transformation. Another one is by studying just matrices. So linear algebra means finite I mean, on finite dimension. I'm talking about. So one you can do it by studying linear transformation. One you can do by studying just matrices, because we know that uh, there is a way to go from one uh, one set to another set. So that means whatever study we do for let's say for uh, uh, set of linear transformation here. We can do similar study for a set of matrices here. If we is V and W are finite dimension, then it's possible because there, there is a way to go from here to there. Right? So, but usually people prefer the second way. I mean, after a certain stage, people prefer the second second uh, uh, way of learning linear algebra because it's more convenient. So, so the second method, which is st studying by uh, using matrices. So this method is more convenient. Why it is more com convenient? Because it's easy to deal with matrices than uh, at least theoretically. It's easy to deal with the matrices. Uh, than comparative to linear transformation. So in fact, we can uh, not only uh, deal with matrices theoretically, but uh, up to some extent we can also deal with them. Uh, deal with them in a, in a nice way numerically also. So the second method is more convenient because we can easy to deal with matrices theoretically as well as numerically. Uh, than uh, than linear transformation. Therefore, uh, in 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 my, in the rest of the course. My main focus would be on lean on matrices now. Of course, I will whenever uh, needed, I will relate the results with uh, linear transformation also whenever needed. But I will try to focus on matrices so that uh, it's easy to explain. It is easy to understand, but one can obvious one can always derive results. Uh, using by looking at the matrices, one can always write a similar result for linear transformation also. Uh, because of uh, because we know that there is a way to go from here to here. Okay, so this is like a general comment. We will do it uh, like when we define. I I I will in the next lectures also I will define uh, things for matrices as well as for linear transformation. But in most of the cases, uh, while explaining things, I will focus on matrices because it would be easy to. Is it easy to understand? All right, so. Let me write the next observation then. <coughs> or let, let let us prove this together. So this is. This is an exercise. So if suppose we have a. A dimension inner product space. And suppose. Uh, Lee is a T is a linear operator. This way. Okay. Then you can say that uh, if T is invertible, then T star is also invertible. <coughs> Not only that. OK, so you you guess the statement and then I'll prove. So look at this result here. The matrix representation here. 
So what I'm saying is that if suppose we have a finite dimension in our space and we have a linear operator on this, then if t is invertible, then can you say from here that t star is also invertible? At least you can guess. So if t is invertible, then what can you say about its matrix? And using that, can you say something about the matrix of t star? And using the matrix of T star, can you say something about T star? So, so this is something like this. So what can you say if T is invertible? Then what can you say about T star? Any guess from here? Sir, also invertible. It's also invertible. Why? Sir, because determinant non-zero at T come. Tiki matrix ka. Tiki then, matrix ka. So yeah, so if T is invertible here, that means the matrix of T is invertible, which you characterize in many ways. So you are saying determinant of this is not there. That means T star this matrix of T is invertible. So this is fine. Then then sir, the determinant doesn't change after taking conjugate. Hmm. That's it changes, but uh, if it is non-zero, it remains non-zero. Non -zero. Yeah. So that means that means what? So T star is invertible. Yeah. That means the matrix of T star is invertible. But if the matrix of T star is invertible, this implies that T star itself is invertible. So this is at least you can guess. We'll we'll see that it is very easy to show also in a different way. This is we are using some like general argument, knowing that if t is invertible, then matrix of t is also invertible. Using this result, we we have concluded whatever we have discussed so far. But I'll give you uh, I'll prove it using the definition, just the definition of adjoint. But uh, at least you can say. Can you also tell me what would be the inverse of T star from this? What would be the inverse of T star? The T inverse yes. beta star. Yeah, so you are saying that T inverse beta star, right? So from here you can at least guess what would be this so if we take the it depends again using the matrices you can say if we take the inverse of this then it would be inverse of this but that you can in, take inside so it's a inverse of uh, it's a star of t inverse okay so this is what is the statement which you can easily at least verify using the matrices but i'll give a different proof using the uh, just using the definition of this so it also gives you a way to how to use this definition of actual. So then if T is invertible, then T is, you can say T star is invertible. Not only that, and you can tell what would be the inverse. So the inverse of T star is just star of T inverse. This is what we have observed and in fact it is true. So let us, so then again I will remove this as an exercise. I will prove this as a result. All right. So we have to prove that uh, since T is T is a linear operator, we know that T star exists because V is finite dimension. So T star, we know that T star is uh, is there. So we know that T star exists. We just have to show that T star is also invertible. Now, in order to show that T star is invertible, I'll just show that T star. So we know that T is in this, this implies that T star exists and it is also a linear operator on this. Since V is finite dimension, I'll just show that T star is 1, 1 and I'm done. At least to say that T star is invertible, right? So let's try to see whether T star is invertible or not. So I will show that T star is invertible or T star is 1, 1 by showing that null space of T star is just the zero space. Okay, so let us take any vector v in v and suppose that t star v is 0. Now I will show that this, this implies that v is 0. 
Okay. Now what we can say from here that this implies this implies if t star v is zero, then this implies that for any vector u t star of v, this inner product is zero because t star v is zero. Right? This is true for all u in v. Now can you tell me what would be the next step? T u comma v. Yeah, so it is T u comma v. This inner product would be zero for all u in v, right? This is true for all u in v. Now, can you tell me from here how to conclude that v is zero? Then T u of u equals to v. No, so. Here u is free, so this is true. This expression is true for all u. So I should choose now. So this is true for all u, and I want to say v is zero. So I should choose this u in such a way that it gives me uh, what I want. That means v is zero. So what should I choose? Yeah. There is some some w, so that w is equal to yeah. So you are saying, I understand what you are saying. So you are saying that you just take the pre-image of V as U, right? Yes. So that means she is saying that you just take U as T inverse of V because T is invertible. So you can always find the, the pre-image of T. And this is zero because this is true for all U. In particular, if you take U is this, then this is true, but then this implies that v v is zero, but this implies v is zero. So therefore, this may this implies that t star is one one, but since v is finite dimensional, this implies that t star is also on two, and that means t star is invertible. So this is fine. So if t is invertible, then easily one can say that t star is invertible. Now we have to find the inverse of t. We have to prove that inverse of t star is actually star of t inverse. So this is also not that difficult, but we just have to carefully write this. So next claim is to show what is our next claim. So next claim is to show that inverse of t star is just star of t inverse. This is what is our claim. Okay. Now since t star is the adjoint and adjoint satisfy this property that t of u v is equal to u t star of v for all u v in v. This we know, right? So what I can do here, so what I'm trying to prove actually, I'm trying to prove, so if I want to show that inverse of t star is this one, then I should be able to show that uh, that t star multiplied by uh, this t inverse star, this should be identity, right? If I want to say that this quantity here is an inverse of these, then I should be able to show that this is true. Because if I multiply t star with this, which is where I'm trying to show that inverse of t star, then it should satisfy this relation that this product should be equal to i identity operator by definition of invertible maps so this is what i'm trying to show here so i should be i should take this thing so i already have t star in this expression i should somehow take this also into the picture so that i can further simplify so i should take uh, inverse of t uh, into the picture so what i can do here the, the right hand side here is equal to You understand what I'm trying to do. So this is what I'm trying to do. So I'll remove this now. So in the right hand side I can write as the same thing, but since t is invertible using that, I will write it as t inverse t u t star v. Because t in, is invertible, so t inverse t is just identity. So I can write uh, this as this also. Right? Why this is true? Because uh, 
not implies I should write this equal. This is equal to this. Right? But then what I can do from here? What I can say from here? Can I write this as T of U, T inverse star, T star V? Can I do that? Yes, sir. Yes, because I have already shown that T inverse exists. A T inverse is given to us. So T inverse is also a linear operator. Since T is a linear operator, so T inverse is also a linear operator. And it's on the finite dimension vector space, inner product space. So we can also talk about in adjoint of T inverse. So we have already proved, so there is no harm in that. So I'm taking now the adjoint of T inverse here. So this is what I have done here. But whatever I just wrote here, this is true for all vectors u and v. So that means what I can say that t of u, and then this is this I can write as uh, uh, i minus t inverse star t star v equal to zero for all u v in v. Right? I just taken uh, both the terms to one side. And then I have written this. Is it okay? But then this is true for all u and v. So, so what can we say from here? So, in particular, if I fix my t, uh, fix my u. So, if I take u, what should I take u here? So that I can say that this is equal to this. So this is so what I'm trying to do here that. Since this quantity, uh, this expression is true for all u and v, I will take, I will choose u in a particular way so that this quantity is zero. If this is zero for all v, then I can say that i minus i is equal to this quantity. So that means I'm done. So this is what I'm trying to do. So what I should choose here? What should I take u as? So can you tell me what should I take u here? T inverse. T inverse. T inverse i minus. Uh, yeah. So you are saying the in uh, t image of this quantity, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is fine. So you just take u as a pre image of this uh, the second component in the inner product. That means i minus t inverse star t star of v take the this one if you do this then you can say that uh, i minus t inverse star t star of v is zero and this is true for all v but then this implies that i is equal to t inverse star t star so that means we are done that uh, inverse of t star so from here we can say that inverse of t star is this one right so we can say that this implies inverse of t star is actually star of t inverse and we are All right, so let me define now a few uh, type of matrices. We will talk about these matrices uh, uh, like in the in the in a few lectures, but uh, after defining uh, eigenvalue eigenvectors. But uh, since we know now at this point, we know the adjoint of an operator and also adjoint of a matrix. So let's try to define a few more uh, uh, operators using the adjoint. So. You know what is the Hermitian matrix? Do you know yes, what, is what is it? Yes, sir. Uh, it? Conjugate transpose equal to uh, itself. The matrix itself, right? Sure, yeah. Have you also heard about unitary matrix? Uh, yes, sir. What is it? Uh, conjugate it's transpose multiplied by one. matrix equal to Identity equal to identity. Yes, sir. A, A star equal to I. 
Right. And how about uh, normal matrices? Have you also heard about normal matrices? Trans uh, transpose product into matrix equal to identity. No, it's not identity. It's the unitary matrix. Unit. Uh, Sir, A star equals to A star. Yes. So basically what I'm trying to say, so let me write this so that everybody knows. So let me write what you know. So you know, so I'll write this as a definition so that those who don't know, they also know this. So if we have a matrix, we have a matrix A of size N cross N over F, where F is either R or C. Then this matrix A is called, let's say first, self-adjoint or Hermitian, the same thing, two different names for the same thing. Self-adjoint or Hermitian if A star is equal to A. So where star is the complex conjugate transpose. It is called orthogonal. Matrix is called orthogonal if F is in, if F is R, that means it's the field of real numbers. If uh, this is true, and a star equal to or uh, a star a equal to i, which is also equal to a a star. So, in the complex, uh, I mean, in the real case, when f is r, this star is just transpose. So you can actually write it as a uh, as transpose. Okay. A A transpose is equal to for the matrix. This matrix A is called unitary if A star A is equal to I, which is also equal to A A star. So in the complex case, when the underlying field is uh, the field of complex number, then this uh, this is called unitary. If the field is the field of real number, then it is called orthogonal. So why I define differently? Because in some books you will see that uh, when they consider only real field, field of real numbers, then they use the term orthogonal. And this matrix is called normal if A star A is equal to A A star. Okay. Now this we know for matrices. Or at least we can talk about this for matrices because we know the adjoint. But the question is, can we do similar? Can we at least define? We'll see what is the relation between in the set of uh, this kind of matrices. And if we try to define this kind of operator also, we'll see what is the relation. But at least since we know star or we know the adjoint of an operator also. So can we talk about uh, similar kind of uh, can we define uh, in the same way? Uh, operators also like a self adjoint operator or unitary operator, normal operator, something like that. So we can at least do that because we know the adjoint. So we, the similar thing I'll define for matrices uh, for operators also. But for that, I need uh, a finite dimensional inner product space. Then only I can talk about it's a star if T is a linear operator. So if T is a linear operator on these, then I know that the star will exist. That means its adjoint will always exist. Then this operator T is called, or let me write this. Then T is called, let's say, self adjoint or Hermitian. The same way we can define for operator also Hermitian. If the adjoint of T is the is equal to the, uh, the operator itself. It is called unitary. If T T star is equal to T uh, I, which is equal to T star T. And it is called normal. If if t t star is equal to or maybe since 
So T is called self adjoint if this is true, it's called unitary if this is true, and it's called normal if T T star equal to T star T. Okay, at least we can define. So this whatever I have defined that makes sense because uh, we can talk about adjoint of T on an in on a finite dimension network space. But the now the question is, what is the relation again? What is the relation between uh, an orthogonal or let's say an Hermitian matrix and Hermitian operator? Or can we say like uh, like we did for uh, for matrix representation of T, we said we said that okay, if T is a uh, is a linear operator, then and on a on a finite dimension network space, and if we fix a basis orthonormal basis for this, then the matrix of T star is just the star of T, the star of matrix of T. This is what we have seen. So can we also relate say something here also like uh, uh, if T is self adjoint then what is the relation between matrix of T and matrix of T star, something like that? So what I'm saying is the following that can we say? So can we say that if T is adjoint or T is self adjoint or T is Hermitian, then the matrix of T is same as matrix of T star. Can we say this with respect to some basis? Or when T is unitary, then matrix of T and T star satisfy this relation. Similarly for unitary matrix also. And the answer is yes, you can do that. I mean, one can prove that uh, the matrix representation of uh, this kind of operators also satisfy a similar kind of relation. So let me write this result here. So what you can do here is the following that. Uh, sorry. So let me write this as a result here. So suppose that we have a. Finite dimensional in inner product space. And suppose T is a linear operator only. Then. Then you can say that T is. So what I'm saying is that. Whatever I'm doing or whatever I'm writing next. This gives you a way to check whether a given operator is Hermitian or unitary or normal. By just by looking at their matrices, met, looking at their matrix presentation. So this result says that if we have a finite dimension in network space and T is a linear operator on this. Then this operator T is is Hermitian Hermitian if and only if so this is uh, this is an if and only if result so this is true if and only if T is Hermitian if and only if the matrix of T uh, matrix of T with respect to or t matrix of T is equal to matrix of T star with for every orthonormal basis. This is important here for every orthonormal basis. If this is true, then it's Hermitian and the other side is also true. Similarly, you can say that this T is unitary. If and only if. If and only if. T star. T, this is equal to identity, which is also equal to this one. And this is true for again for every orthonormal basis. If this is true for all to, or for every orthonormal basis, then you can say that T is unitary and vice versa. Similarly, you can say that it is normal if and only if this is true. And again, this is true for every orthonormal basis, orthonormal basis of V. 
okay this is uh, proving this is not difficult so how much time we left so i'll so we have 15 minutes i'll prove this for one case so let's say for unitary case i will prove and then uh, using similar idea you can prove for other cases also this is again uh, not that difficult to show so let me give you quick idea for how to prove the unitary case and for the other two cases you can prove yourself okay or you want to try yourself so i can leave this as an exercise so i'll leave this as an exercise so you try it yourself okay just work out uh, this thing you can easily find this in any textbook but uh, you try to do it yourself and then if you don't get it then i i can help you in that so that's all on on this inner product space so with this we like uh, sort of conclude uh, at this point the inner product space later on we can come back to these matrices and we can solve problems and we can talk about more about these matrices once we introduce inner uh, eigen value eigen vectors so why i introduce these uh, these matrices because uh, explaining eigen value eigen vectors would be easy for me if you use this uh, this type of matrices also and in some cases um, it would also be easy to give you examples when we have like uh, some kind of class of matrices yeah. so now you have this so in the next lecture uh, next lecture would be on tuesday where i will uh, talk about applications before uh, starting the the eigen value eigen vectors i will talk about uh, application of uh, eigen value eigen vectors in more general and then we will introduce uh, the concept okay so again uh, on monday we have a quiz it is uh, at or uh, not monday so i think you suggested tuesday so on tuesday at 3 pm we will have a quiz i'll send you the details regarding the quiz so it is whatever we have covered after uh, minor exam so th basically this inner product so i'll i'll uh, give two questions the questions would be uh, like uh, easy if you know the the like if you know the results and if you know the uh, the basic idea so i'll give you two questions for 25 to 30 minutes and uh, you try to use uh, whatever we have like we have discussed in the class and try to use the definition and try to use the results which we have uh, discussed in this inner part space to solve these problems okay so if you try to like uh, uh, just look for these problems on google then you won't find but if you just use the basic idea the basic results we have used we have defined in the class or we have discussed in the class then you will be easily to you would be easily able to solve these problems okay so and there was also one more suggestion from your side that uh, can we have one extra quiz so that uh, uh, we can consider like uh, can we have uh, one extra quiz so that uh, best of uh, three out of four uh, can be considered so this we will see depending on uh, how much time we left i mean when we'll conduct the third quiz it's depending on that we will see whether or and, and i'll see your class average based on that we will conduct the the fourth quiz but right now i mean uh, as we had uh, we had announced earlier at the beginning of this uh, this course there would be three quiz but depending on when we have when we'll have our third quiz uh, we can have one more okay but uh, at this point uh, i won't commit anything but uh, the next quiz would be on tuesday okay if you have anything you can you can tell me otherwise we stop here sir uh, tuesday is holiday tuesday is what holiday sir so for what 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 is tuesday i mean for what this is a holiday it's a semester break it's a semester break okay yes. but you only suggested me this 
see i asked you for thursday that means today or friday when you said some of you said friday but then you cancel then saturday then again you cancel now you suggested me monday monday again you cancelled and then you suggested me tuesday and tuesday also now you are saying anyway no. this is an uh, this is an online quiz so even if it is a holiday you should be able to attend it's not like you have to physically appear okay uh, no, just for half an hour but uh, you are doing the class so if class is not there then i that is fine but the quiz would be there yes sir okay okay so if the i will see the calendar academic calendar if the class is not there then we can't do anything i mean but if the quiz is scheduled then it would be scheduled on that time so right, now itself you tell me whether you want it on tuesday or not because if don't if you don't want then we'll pre pond or we will postpone we'll see what are the other uh, like possible timing but uh, if it is scheduled then you then it is scheduled at the at that time it won't be changed so that's why i am taking your suggestion tell me something if if you like you're saying that tuesday 3 pm is fine then i would say that go for it because it won't disturb it, it's a holiday it will take only half an hour and it won't disturb your other lectures also in the coming days so just do finish it finish the second quiz so that we can have we'll have at least enough time to for the third quiz and if we have we have some more time then we can have one extra quiz so it's your loss only if you are delaying this quiz because then we'll have only three quiz and i'm planning as you have requested if the time permits we can have four instead of three okay so okay sir yes so can we have it on tuesday at 3 pm yes yes yes, yes. okay so i will send an email regarding the syllabus as i mentioned already that it is just inner product whatever we have covered after till today's lecture after minor exam that would be there in the quiz it would be very easy easy in the sense uh, easy like quiz 1 but you will have to think and you will have to write so just uh, look at your notes try to think uh, the how these results can be used whatever we have discussed and then you will be easy to um, to answer this question you would be easily able to answer okay so we can stop here and have a good day